Good morning again and uh, our passage today is the first few verses of the book of Acts, Acts 1 verse 1 to 11 and the title that I've given this reflection is let's start at the very beginning. It's a very good place to start. For many years this was my go-to passage when uh, speaking about the purpose and calling of the church. I remember when I first travelled to Zambia I would often preach on this passage as a way of encouraging and and motivating the church in the mission that we have together. The writer of Acts is widely accepted to be Luke, the author of the gospel of the same name. So when he talks about his former book, that's what he means in my gospel. This is what I wrote about. I always found it interesting that the gospel of Luke was a complete account of Jesus' birth, life, death and resurrection. And yet his own assessment was that it was an account of all that Jesus began The clear inference being that there is much, much more to come, even though we're at the end of Jesus' earthly life. The words are written as a preface or introduction to the Acts of the Apostles and lead us to understand that all that was to follow was not something separate, but was in fact part two of Jesus' ministry. The beginning of the expansion of all that he had done, but it was only just a beginning. This was Jesus' ministry 2.0 going to another plane and that it was going to be played out in and through his disciples, empowered by the Holy Spirit. And in that way, his ministry was going to be multiplied in so many different places. In the way Luke describes what happens, there are some very clear foundations being laid by Jesus amongst his followers. In verse 3, it says, After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. I heard a pastor speaking recently about their experience of church and worship during lockdown. He said that although the online connection had provided new and interesting ways for the church to operate, and I'm sure we can all agree with that, there was something fundamental missing when we can't actually physically be together. Our dogs are very interacting, very interested in people, very responsive to human attention. Anybody that's met them will be able to testify to that. But if you speak to them via FaceTime or Zoom when when we're away from home or something similar, there's no response at all. They don't even acknowledge you. They just look straight past you, straight through the screen. They don't acknowledge or react in any way, shape or form. Clearly, there is a need that they have to be physically present in 3D reality with the sound, smell and touch of human interaction. That's what makes connection meaningful for them. The disciples were witnesses of Christ's resurrection in that they could say that which our eyes have seen, our ears have heard and our hands have touched, this we proclaim to you. That which we have experienced in three-dimensional reality, this is what we proclaim. Not just something we've learned in our heads, but something that we've seen, felt, touched and experienced. And therefore, before giving them anything to do or any power to do it with, Jesus ensured that he spent 40 days with them, physically close, three-dimensional reality, because it was that knowledge, that conviction of his reality that was going to hold them when they went out into a hostile world, where in many instances the first instinct would be to kill them. Perhaps for the first time in many of our experiences, this pandemic has led us to having rules and restrictions placed on our everyday lives in ways we haven't experienced before. Our instinct is to obey, and the thought of stepping out of line or even choosing to do something that brings down the possibility of a caution or a fine is something we can't even contemplate. Imagine then if just expressing your faith in Jesus could lead to a death sentence. There would be so many points at which we could persuade ourselves that it wasn't really necessary to stick our necks out in that way, that it wasn't really useful for us to suffer in any way as a result of saying the wrong thing or expressing the wrong view. The only thing at those moments of extreme pressure that could provide the strength and the determination to see it through would have been their encounter with Jesus. Not Christianity or Christian morals or Christian teaching or the fellowship of the believers, but their experience of Christ himself. It's that that would have provided the basis for them to be as courageous as they were. 
Therefore, he spent 40 days giving them convincing proofs that he was indeed alive. Their allegiance was therefore to Christ and their obedience was obedience to Christ and not any other agency. As we consider what it means to be Easter people, people of the resurrection, followers of Jesus, our root, our foundation must be that same encounter with Christ, not just his church or his people or his teachings, but Christ himself. Otherwise, we'll have no chance of standing when any measure of pressure or resistance is felt. What we do, we do for him and for nobody else. They received their instructions from him. He told them to wait, to wait for the Holy Spirit. Everything we are as Christians is rooted in direct experience, experience of Christ and his salvation and an actual outpouring of the power and the life of the Spirit of God into our hearts, minds and bodies. That is how, he went on to say, you will be my witnesses in all Judea, Samaria and to the ends of the earth. There is momentum in the purposes of God. That means when we are caught up in his purposes, all that he does in our lives propels us forwards, upwards and outwards. Christianity is an intentional, missional faith. It's not a private affair. It's a message for the entire world and Jesus provides us with the power to take it and to continue and to complete his work. When he had instilled all of this in them, he was finally taken up into heaven before their very eyes. They were left to be and do all that he had described. As they stood there, perhaps bereft again, perhaps uncertain again, two men dressed in white appeared to them and promised them that he would come back in the same way that he had gone from them. Jesus' ministry on earth was just the beginning. This was another level of power and effectiveness as his ministry was multiplied in his followers. They were rooted in their actual experience of him and powerless without the indwelling presence of the Spirit in their lives. They were given a mission that was time-bound in that it would have an end when he finally came back. The whole story is now laid before them with the death and resurrection of Christ, a point on the timeline in the purposes of God in the world. Things were not at an end. They were just beginning And we are participants and co-workers in the same ministry. I read an article this weekend about the truly unsettling nature of Easter. We're used to grief and despair and hopelessness that was experienced on Good Friday. What is truly challenging and unsettling is being called into a grief-stricken and broken world with actual living hope and the power to see it make a difference. That's what Luke opens up before us here. And it's the challenge we must embrace. Let's pray. Lord, we acknowledge that all we read about Jesus' ministry was just the beginning. We recognise perhaps with fear and trembling that we are key players in the outworking and continuation of his ministry in our time and space. For your church, Lord, we pray that we would truly be Easter people who experience, embrace and build on the fact of the resurrection. May that make us fearless and determined to receive everything you can give us. The empowerment of the Spirit to spend our lives in pursuing your great commission. Help us to understand what it means in our day and age, but never to flinch from it, never to avoid it, but to meet the challenge of the unsettling mandate of Easter with all of our time, energy and resources. In Jesus' name, Amen.